So thank you. I um I discovered like presenting Carlos and Tibor to each other that uh, they don't know that well about uh, each other projects. So we're gonna take like roughly 10, 15 minutes uh, to understand the context of Goralizer first and uh, BitKid later. So Carlos, can you tell us a little bit about Goralizer, what it does, how it does what it does do, and why you did it? Yeah, sure. Can I share my screen too? demo stuff sure yeah uh yeah so basically uh let me open your file. basically uh gorilla i created basically each in my own niche you know i had some go projects that i wanted to uh, like compile for several architectures and create the uh, tar disease and create the GitHub release with the changelog, upload everything. And later I wanted to create the uh, Homebrew tabs for macOS and later on also Martins. And initially it was like a pretty bad shell script, which was uh, I set it up with like a bunch of environmental variables and didn't work very well. And then, yeah, and actually it was using uh, Go X, I think, is the name of the the tool that uh, I was using at the time to build for several architectures, and like another binary which uh, which was an integration with GitHub, etc. So uh, at one vacation, I decided I would try to write this in Go to see how it goes, and it kind of uh, like uh, grew out of proportion i guess because now a bunch of people use it and and it gain a lot of other features and uh, yeah but pretty much what it does is uh, i have uh, actually like a main.go here uh, and then you create a yaml file you can do that by running like go releaser in it it creates a default one uh, and then you pretty much just run like go releaser and it works, uh, except when it doesn't because I need to uh, format. Uh, I just do a release live. So I'm uh, just pushing a tag here and then go releaser. Yeah. So uh, on my config here, I'm building just for Linux and just chart textures. But I can add more things here. I can add like Go ARM uh, setup here also. Uh, and it creates like a metrics of all the valid builds with all the options and build all the binaries. And then here I just have also the uh, the Docker configuration. This is like already. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, Carlos. Go. Do you mind to zoom a little bit on the code? Oh, so sorry. People can see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I Thank forgot you. my display is 4K. It's hard for others. <laughs> <laughs> that was very tiny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is already like a, a bit into the the multi arch stuff. So the way it works now is you create like multiple uh, Docker declarations here with and basically do the uh, Go arch stuff on the tag or the, the image name actually. So yeah it should be done by now and we can see it build binaries creating the archives even though we don't have any config for archives here but it's default uh, create checksums create the docker images and then uh, push the the artifacts to the release and also push the docker images uh, so if we go here uh, release it would have one more now if the change log and the images that were generated and yeah besides that uh, we you can add like uh, you can create packages with uh, with an FPM which is not FPM maybe people know FPM is a tool written in Ruby to create Linux packages and NFPM is basically Kind of the same thing, but in Go, and only right now only supports RPM and DAB. 
uh, to uh, APK, it's it's being done by contributors there. Uh, but yeah, you can create Linux packages with it, and also uh, Snapcraft packages, which are those Snap packages for uh, Ubuntu and other distributions. Uh, the Helmy Brew tab, you can just add a section there with uh, the penises and etc., and it also just works. Uh, a scoop, which is a Helmy Brew for Windows. Uh, there's a bunch of customization for basically everything. So in the end, it's just like a YAML file. Go releaser actually releases itself, so it's a bit more complex of an example. Uh, we can see here the Brio scoop, et cetera, also in FPM. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And yeah, I don't know if you have any questions regarding something, but. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you about my experience with Gorilizer because I I'm, I'm, I use it for almost like all the all the binaries that I end up like using in uh, or developing like in open source. And I know that in, at InfluxData we also use uh, that for all the other binaries because InfluxDB actually use Gorilizer for that. And yeah, as you described, it's very simple to use. And uh, you didn't mention, but I'm gonna mention it for you. Is the GitHub action? So if you use like GitHub Actions, yeah. you have a very easy integration for that. So that's cool. Yeah, there's even a, a topic here on that. Yeah, the, the idea was to like run it on the CI, like on my demo I run on my machine because I don't even have CI on that repo. Uh, and I didn't want to like add more things on the live demo too that might fail. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, the idea is to always run on, on CI. Uh, there is even a topic here, continuous integration with examples for several CIs. So the idea is you push the tag and wait a couple of minutes and your release is done basically. Uh, and before that, like I uh, was manually like generating everything and dragging files in the release and things like that. Uh, I know some, more complex projects, maybe like Prometheus and Kubernetes, for example, they have the, they have their own uh, release systems. But yeah, uh, this I think I think the big win for Go Releaser is for is small to almost big projects because it, it basically works for almost almost all of them, I think. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you do you have any tips for like library developers? So if you if, is it usable for libraries as well, or it's mainly for binaries? It was mainly for binaries, but a few weeks ago, I think uh, you can pass a, a configuration on builds, uh, which I don't remember which flag it is, but I. Yeah, skip, pass a skip through and it just created the dark tribes and everything else. So you can use it for libraries now as well. That, that's good. Yeah, because I have two different like like CI integration integration for releasing applications that use Gorilizer and another one uh, for like libraries. It, it would be nice to, I would definitely have a look and try to merge everything to Gorilizer. Yeah, if it doesn't work, <laughs> feel free to open an issue, but it, it should work. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, thank you for the presentation. It was a very good introduction. Tibor, do you want to go from there and tell us a little bit about um, BuildKit? Sure. <clears throat> um, let me try. Sorry, it's a little. Yeah, I mean, the first I can, I can like rumble in the meantime. I'm very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you got everything figured out too, do you, too do you soon. See the, do you see the screen or not? <laughs> yeah. Yes. OK. So um, uh, where to start? So yeah, basically, there, there are two projects. One is BuildKit. It's a, uh, I, I, th I like to think of it as a, a Built, uh, sorry, a platform for building software 
uh, very reliably and very uh, uh, efficiently. And um, the reason I say it's a platform is because it, people can build on top of it and still gain a lot of flexibility, like innovate on top, and at the same time still be able to interoperate between the different, uh, different things. So I'll, I'll explain a little more what I mean by that. Um, but basically, uh, if you're a Docker user, uh, then what BuildKit is, uh, is the guts of a completely revamped from scratch a V2 builder for Docker. I mean, it's integrated into Docker. So there's multiple ways you can use BuildKit. Uh, this is uh, the BuildKit's uh, repo here. You can, uh, you can use it as a library. Um, you, you can just link it in, into it. You can use it as a binary itself. It has a, it has a daemon and a, a build control CLI. Uh, so those are, those are the two ways. Uh, if you don't want to use directly the project, like directly uh, the, build, uh, the build kit um, uh, constructs directly, you want to, you're just a Docker user and you're used to Docker build and you want to, uh, you want to leverage all the features that I want to talk about. All you can do is um, is basically do docker underscore build kit and uh, equals one and run docker build. It's integrated already in Docker. So um, actually, I should have shared all the screen. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So ba basically, at the at the core of build kit, you have what's called LLB, which is a a binary DAG, and that's that's the core part. That's where all the magic happens. All the cache uh, resolve uh, resolving happen happens. Um, sorry, I'm not I'm not very helpful in, in showing stuff here. But what I'm trying to do is um, maybe show you a, a couple of features. So on top of this LLB, well, what's happening here? Uh, on top of this LLB, you can you can create a bunch of uh, different syntaxes that compile to it. So, for instance, in, uh, if you know LLVM, you have a bunch of languages, and they all compile into LLVM uh, IR in like the intermediate representation. So that's LLB in the build sense. It's uh, the the graph of dependencies, and and it's not it's not just a linear thing like Docker files usually are. It's uh, it's a, it can be very uh, Graphy basically, and so how do you how do you create a Docker file syntax on that that allows you to express all those all those things, and and that's why we we have um, we have added some features to Docker files. The the first thing is multi multi stage. Uh, hopefully you have heard about it. That allows you to um, that allows you to create the, the different graphs. Um, so. I don't want to go into all the features here, but the main point here is that you have a bunch of new syntaxes that are available thanks to uh, what's called the Dockerfile front end, which will compile Docker files into this intermediate uh, LLB DAG. Um, anyway, so I I'll, I'll try to go and give a demo later, but a quick note on BuildX. Um, BuildX is basically a CLI plugin that allows you to uh, benefit from all the features that BuildKit has, basically, uh, and 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 a bunch of new things. Uh, so it's it has familiar UI uh, that if you use to Docker build, uh, it has a couple of new things, but it's overall the same thing, which is not uh, the case for the build control CLI. Uh, and it allows you to leverage all the BuildKit capabilities, and that's where we're going to talk more about multi multi platform um, capabilities. Uh, but it also has like multi-node support. So if you want to uh, create separate um, separate separate builder instances to you know separate your state uh, in CI, for instance, then that's very useful. And also you can you can specify different nodes that have different uh, platforms. So uh, anyway, so this is just a broad overview. Um, I was wondering how much I could. Uh, how much I could show you. Um, so I, I don't know how should we do this. Uh, what's what's the time? Twenty. Um, so I could I could explain. Let, let me. Exp I could explain a little bit about um, 
the, the benefits that uh, BuildKit provides. So, uh, yep. so this is a Docker file, an older Docker file of Build of BuildKit, <clears throat> that has that is like, you know, it's not your random Docker file. It's very, it's very. Um, you, you still see the screen, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, and it's big enough. Uh, anyway, yep. so. It's it's uh, it's not super optimized, but you know um, the main point I want to to emphasize here is that you see a bunch of from lines, and this is what we call multi-stage, and uh, and this allows you to basically create the create the graph, um, create the your build dependency. So for instance, if you if you want to if you want to build uh, sorry. If you want to build, for instance, build control, then you do. Whoops, what happened? Uh, you can do. Um, you would basically do build, build, uh, build dash dash target build control, and that would be the name of your stage. So th this stage would would execute, um, but. Sorry, I'm not explaining this super well, but the, the point I want to say is that this older Docker file is not as optimized as uh, as this build kit one, uh, and and yet, okay. So two things: there there are two levels of optimizations. Sorry, I'm I'm a little lost here. Two levels of optimizations. You can build this Docker file that has a bunch of uh, stages in parallel. You can build it with or without BuildKit. If you build it with BuildKit, it will be extremely efficient and will paralyze all the builds. I'm not going to run it with the legacy builder, but um, uh, I, I did it, and it took like four minutes to run just from the start. And uh, iterative, uh, and if you, you just change something and rebuilt it, then it would be two minutes. So if uh, uh, Sorry, I, I, I want to make sure. I'm going to explain all this very soon, but um, this will use the old uh, Docker file, the test of Docker file that I showed you without uh, BuildKit Docker file optimizations, but still using BuildKit. And um, yeah, I, I should have. So this will take about a minute, so it's not super interesting. Uh, but what I wanted to, well, sorry, I think my terminal is a little messed up. Um, can I maybe open up a new window? In the same time, I can show you some new fe fe features uh, of whoops, build kit. So here, the first line is syntax equals Docker slash Docker file one dash experimental or one point one dash experimental. This is the core part of the pluggability of build kit. This is called a front end, and it's in a Docker image. And when build kit sees this first line in the Docker file, or any file for that matter, it will it will use that image to build uh, to interpret the following file, and so basically the Docker the Docker file compiler that compiles to LLV will uh, lives in that in that image, and the cool thing about this is that now you no longer have to wait for the next Docker release to have a bunch of new features. All you need to do is is uh, create your own front end, or wait for the next uh, uh, experimental features that we push to to this image, and all of a sudden you'll have new capabilities, and that that also means you don't necessarily need Docker file uh, features. You can add new Docker file features if you want, but you can also write your entire all, uh, your entirely own syntax. So for Go Releaser, for instance, this could mean if you wanted to create a a front end. That uh, runs inside uh, that runs Go Releaser inside a container and makes sure that you know um, everything runs smoothly. 
uh, or, or like for producer me, then uh, you could just add this one line to that YAML file. And, you know, it's a comment, so it doesn't affect people who are using uh, the releaser directly, but people who, who might not uh, have downloaded a releaser, they just have Docker, they could do a Docker build uh, dash F by specifying the, the file in the dot, and it would work even with older versions of Docker. So that um, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So one a uh, couple of things I want to show here is dash dash mount. Um, so two things. Uh, you can mount you can mount the context the Docker context, which is the local thing. It will mount it inside your. Um, inside this image without copying it. So that, that's a huge benefit. Another another type of mount is type cache. This is super useful for all the all the caching that you you put in um, you know your 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 Go cache or your Go mod cache or your NPM or your node modules uh, cache and all, all the language specific cache. The application specific cache is what we call it. You can put you can put it uh, in a uh, Opaque folder that that BuildKit manages. It's just you know, uh, it's not visible necessarily to the user where it, where it is. But every time you rebuild, it will try to it will try to reuse that same folder for for cache. And so we just add a bunch of caching mechanisms for this. And if you build it this way, then uh, then it's supposed to be much faster. So. Um, Uh, what I, okay, so sorry, I messed up here. My demo. Um, how will this work? Okay, sorry, I'll have to wait another another round. But uh, I, I did it earlier. The main point is that it went from forty eight seconds of incremental builds down to eleven seconds of incremental build time. So ju just by adding these, these Dockerfile features, uh, you can speed up your build tremendously. Um, OK, so let's see, OK, so it, it, it was caching. So what I wanted to show is um, here, I just add a comment in a file. And uh, you know, if I if I do the legacy, it will be uh, almost a minute. And if I don't do legacy, uh, you'll see. And it's done in in basically eleven seconds instead of almost fifty seconds. Uh, I mean, I should probably show you the, the difference, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's very, like, and what it's cool is that it, it looks like it is a full, like, build system, as you say. So it's not what we used to see with Dockerfile, that uh, the old way where you you use Dockerfile to build, like, Docker images. Uh, this looks like, this looks mo much more than that. Um, so thank you for mentioning a point I want to also make, which is that, um, the, the point of BuildKit is not necessarily to only build images. It's a builder, so you can build anything with it. The, the idea is that you want to leverage the, uh, the, the, the benefits that containers provide of you know, isolation, of not, of not having uh, side effects, of you know, it doesn't touch your host too much or at, at all by default. And you can, you can uh, uh, obviously, if, if it needs permissions for certain things, it would ask. But uh, the idea is that you, you leverage the guarantees that containers provide you, and uh, you can build anything with that. Images is one obvious thing we want to build for, for Docker, right? So here, it took almost a minute. Uh, so like almost 10 times, 10 times uh, slower uh, without these uh, new built good features. Uh, so uh, also, th this, is, this is how you can enable Docker build kit on a Docker, um, on a Docker instance if you you want to start using it. Um, so yeah, one thing I wanted to say is that it's not necessarily Docker images that you want to build. 
In fact, um, I believe it's in Docker now. Um, you can you can build. We have a new out, dash dash output uh, flag, uh, which is a dash o shorthand, and you can you can basically extract from the image. You can extract the binary that you want. So. Um, uh, like to, to give you to give you an example, build X itself can like if you want to build a specific version of uh, of build kit, you can just do you can just do this. Um, so let me go here. So two things I want to show is dash dash platform, which uh, I, I I wanted to talk a little more about that. Uh, the dash dash output, which show, gives a directory where the where the uh, final image should be extracted, basically, and you don't even need to git clone uh, build x. It, it works out of the box. You can even specify a tag or a branch here. Uh, so yeah, if you want to do, uh, I think this is the latest release. The dash the platform local is super cool. It figures out what not not what the daemon's platform is, but what the client's platform is, and we'll set everything accordingly. In this case, it's Darwin, so it's Mac. Uh, and so it will specify, and I'll show you soon how, uh, the Darwin uh, OS all the way in the Docker file and, and you know, build, build accordingly, and we'll extract it. We'll send it back to the client, and we'll extract it here. So anyway, it, it's not. The, the point I wanted to make here is just that the output doesn't have to be an image. It can it can be uh, it can be just to build any binary. <clears throat> so, That's very very cool. Thank you for showing us all this. And uh, um, I mean, there is a lot more that I have to learn now. I see your demo than what I suppose. Uh, so, Carlos, what do you think about like looking at that? What do you think about about GridKit and what you saw so far? Right, it's definitely awesome. I mean. Uh... It does a lot of things that I, it seems to do a lot of things that I just can do with plain Docker and Docker files. Uh, I I guess it, it has a, a Go API too, right? Yes, let me let me show you that. Um, yeah, I that I'm kind of interested about because maybe uh, I could have like less dependencies on like binaries that need to be installed on the machine, for example, when running Go Releaser, for example. Yes. Like, yeah, for example, uh, previously uh, we depended on, uh, for example, RPM, the, the binary RPM to generate uh, RPM uh, packages. And now we don't anymore. So that's kind of cool because some people had like older versions of that RPM, and things break all the time and all that. So usually using as an API, I think it's uh, more stable because I right. control better what's happening. So, right, so there, there's multiple integration points with, with BuildKit itself. You can, you can integrate with, uh, um, so like for instance, the way Docker integrated BuildKit is to embed the daemon inside the Docker daemon. So that's, that's basically the controller. So, you would you would have to create a new controller here, and uh, and it will expose a gRPC API, and a client will have to talk to it. Uh, you can also just you know talk to an existing uh, an existing uh, uh, sorry an existing uh, BuildKit uh, controller with a BuildKit client, right? And so then you would send you would send uh, the uh, build definitions to build, etc. Uh, now the front end stuff that I was talking about, the, how Docker files are implemented. Let me show you here. These are front ends. Uh, uh, yeah, because technically, if I'm well understanding, of, or you know, I'm just you know, we are just chatting or whatever. So don't don't take what it says seriously. But technically, like the if if um, Carlos, you see the the need for uh, moving like go releaser to 
to build kit, technically you can you can use the go releaser syntax, which is like a YAML, and build a front end for build kit. Right. So that that would allow you to basically do something like build dash f slash uh, go releaser the YAML uh, dot without having go releaser installed, and it would work even with older versions of Docker if you have Docker build kit enabled. That's pretty so, awesome. Uh, uh, on buildx, I just want to say that you have a every uh, like the documentation is is uh, is all here on the buildx repo. You, you can there are some differences between um, the builders. So uh, here, buildx ls shows you all the builders. By default, it will use your doc, your Docker instance, obviously. And if you you can create new builder instances by uh, by doing buildx create. And it will create basically containers and run BuildKit inside them. And that's why it will be full BuildKit capable. There are some limitations due to the fact that it runs in a container. And, it, and it, it, for instance, if you build an image, it doesn't show up in your Docker images. So you need to load it. So we have like a couple of things like that. But um, should I, like, I, I wanted to talk more about multi arch maybe and, and how. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I would like just to say something about Multiar because that's the main the reason of why we're here. I think we can have another chat about like the front end stuff later. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's get let, let's get back on track. Um, so the, I mean, we saw during the Carlos demo that there is a like a, a way to um, you know uh, multi arc already in Gorilla like using using more build steps and. Uh, but recently, I mean, like maybe last year, uh, Docker made a huge work on uh, having the ability to, in some way, you know, ha like downloading the same uh, image every time during the Docker pool from the same uh, image name, but downloading the right, uh, the right target uh, OS based on uh, where you are or what you want. So uh, right. it's not. Something that's, you know, it's not something that you have to choose uh, because you know the tag, but it's something that comes for, for free because the distribution knows uh, what has to, to know. Um, so that's the main topic, and the idea is, uh, you know, there is a way to have the same feeling in Corelizer, or how can, or for sure there is, but how do we get there? Right. So here I have a very simple Docker file, which is, I believe, relatively similar to what Corelizer does because. Uh, yeah. It just puts the final artifact into a, in, into a Docker container. So um, uh, here I, I, I'm basically doing the same thing. I have a hello on my host, and uh, and I can basically do a Docker build, uh, and it will, you know, it will it will create a Docker image with with my hello stuff. The problem is that um, the problem is that if I inspect my hello image. I see that it's it's uh, it's Linux. It's it's not Darwin, right? So how can I do that? Um, for, so he, I have a first question: When you do go releaser, you, you're is it when you say multi arch? Are you saying you it's multi arch and multi platform, as in different OSs as well? I'm assuming so, but just uh, short. Right now, it's just. Uh, Linux and multiple um, architectures. Like ARM architectures, yes. Okay, so that changes that changes uh, that changes things. Um, I mean, okay. But if you want for uh, the sake of the discussion, uh, so yeah. so yeah, for the sake of discussion, basically. Um, I mean, the thing is, there are so many cool things that it com uh, it complicates a little bit. Um, the, the point is, if you have Docker Desktop running, if you download Docker Desktop, we have uh, basically a um, architecture emulation with QMU built in. So, so let, let, let's forget the Go OS and just do Go Arch ARM64. Uh, like so. Whoops. Come on, what's going on? Okay. Uh, anyway, the the point I want to make is 
is that this Docker file is, is not as not as efficient, and you want to use a better one. If I can find it. Um, so yeah, let's use for instance this one. I apologize for. Uh, so here, <clears throat> instead of building on the host, you build inside a container, and it gives you much more uh, much more flexibility. Um, so here, for instance, if I want to do Docker build dash dash platform Linux ARM64, oh yeah, maybe we'll have to pull this, but it will basically build an image for Linux ARM64 uh, and store it locally. The problem is <clears throat> not all are, not all the platforms are supported in 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 uh, vanilla Docker. That that's the main problem. Is like we we need to, we need some work to be done inside uh, the Docker daemon to allow uh, to run multiple uh, to build multi arch multi platform images. So in the meantime, what you can use is Buildx, which is uh, which is this um, which is this tool here, and create create a, a different a different driver, uh, create a different uh, builder. Sorry. With the Docker container driver, and that one, if you use that one, then it will, it, you would be able to, um, you would be able to build multiple images. So, sorry, let me not go ahead. What I wanted to say here is, you built, you built this Docker image for ARM, and just because you're using, uh, you're using Docker Desktop. Okay, so I did an, add an entry point here. <clears throat> but basically, Docker Desktop runs. What the heck? Runs on ARM. Gosh. Yes, that's. I I I, I yes. always I never forget. But today I forgot. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, what did I want to say? Yeah, so you have ARM64, and and the main point is if you the, the is that you cannot do multiple ones here. It fails. It says it doesn't understand. If you do build X, you you can. And that so here it will instantiate the build kit daemon uh, inside the inside the inside the container. Uh, obviously, it has a new state, so it needs to re-download, uh, uh, go in that in that container. Uh, but the main point here is that your <clears throat> your image will be will be multi multi arch. So um, another point here I want to say is when you build inside a inside a container like this with BuildX, um, the image is not exported. So see, it, it runs at the same time AMD sixty four and ARM sixty four in parallel. Um, but what you really want is create is create a, an image here. Um, what did I call this? Whatever. Hello. So now we'll be all it should be all cached, so it's relatively quick. But again, it doesn't show up in my Docker images because uh, it's running inside a container. However, we have a new dash dash push thing, and you can just push it right away. Interesting. If, if I need uh, different Docker files for each architecture for whatever reason, can I still yes. use that? Yes. Um, so, where is it? Oops. Basically, um, basically, okay. I sh what I showed you was was exactly. What I um, what was is basically should basically work, but uh, this run step runs on ARM, so this will download the ARM GoLang and will run the Go build for ARM. So it's basically like native compiling. It's not cross compiling. If you want to do cross compiling, uh, I uh, let let me show you real quick what I mean by that. Uh, 
you want to basically lock in your this uh, builder stage to the platform where the that the daemon has, and then you want to uh, and then you want to basically uh, let me just do target arch. We have a couple of magic environment uh, build arcs here that you can do, and here you can just do go arch target arch, and this will create this will create uh, uh, what's it called from builder uh, sorry from scratch copy from builder uh, hello and slash and so here hello. And so this last stage will be built, and this will be target sp uh, platform specific to the target that you specify in the CLI. However, this one will still be AMD 64. And so this is when this is when you really want, um, you know, th this will, this leverage is cross compiling for the same thing. And the uh, added advantage of this is that you can run it uh, you can run it for Windows and Darwin as well. Anyway, um, nice. What else did I want to say here? Uh, you mentioned something. Um, oh yeah, XX. This is uh, another cool project by Tonus, which allows you to um, to do cross compiling very easily. So uh, this Golang thing has a has a cool wrapper that understands these target platform target arch stuff and sets the Go as Go arch, handles even the the Go arm the arm uh, the arm Go arm uh, specific stuff, uh, even handles uh, cross compiling with C. Uh, so this is this is pretty cool, and all you need to do is just this you know basically these two lines. Uh, and and it will it will become specific to your uh, specific to the uh, you know to the platform that you want to build. Anyway, I feel that after this chat, I just want a bunch of extra night awake trying to <laughs> hack this because <laughs> there is a lot to do. Uh, <laughs> Yes. So yeah, in, in terms of in, in terms of integration, uh, we can we can talk about that as well, Carlos, if you want. Yeah, uh, on the Google user side, the idea is basically to build a binary ONS and use the same binary everywhere. So uh, what happens is that usually the Docker file is just like from scratch or from whatever, and right. they copy the already compiled binary. Uh, to the image. So uh, thinking in terms of how to integrate, so for example, build X with that, uh, I'm kind of uh, built something in my mind right now. So uh, I think, yeah, I, I think I can just um, add like s some flag there to use build X and I will have to change how the user does some stuff internally. But in the end, I can use the platform art to copy from a specific folder, for example, or a specific binary name or whatever. Uh, the Docker files will be a little bit uh, uh, different right. from what they look today, but it, it would work, I guess. So if all you, if really all you have or all you need is, um, is what's it called, is um, multi-arch and just Linux, yep. then, then there is a possibility of integrating with uh, with this thing called image tools. Uh, th this should have all you need. Um, I can show you maybe a little better. Uh, I mean, anyway, th there's a command line version of it. Um, what this does is it, is it takes, an, is it takes uh, multiple images and combines them into, into one. So what you could do um, however, I'm now I, I I'm not sure if it will work if it's not if it's if Docker is not running Docker Desktop. I, I would have to I would have to try that. Um, basically, the problem with native Docker is that if the if Docker doesn't support that architecture by default, then it will not even create the image. So you won't be able to push the image to Hub. But 
assuming you have a Docker desktop and you just need the, uh, Linux and various architectures, you could push one all the images uh, by basically calling out to Docker like you do today. But then to create a multi-arch uh, image, you could, uh, you could link with this piece of code here uh, that, that combines multiple, multiple uh, manifests into one, and then it pushes them directly from the CLI. So there's a command here. Uh, I can show you maybe it will be easier. Yeah, we should definitely figure out if the Docker uh, for Mac or Docker client is required because I presume like that will change the part of integration because uh, yeah that that is a huge yeah. that is a huge uh, question like if uh, and yeah. and also and also if uh, if it's using Docker desktop or not yeah and could they also use the Docker manifest uh, tool so that that's why I'm talking about image tools is that that's basically a much simpler way of using manifest. Um, um, basically, this will this will push directly. So let, let me again. Sorry, I'm a little lost here. Uh, what did I want to do? Different payloads. Okay, so uh, let me create a Docker file here that just adds this payload from scratch. Copy payload. And slash okay. So now, uh, if I'm using uh, the default builder, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically just create and push multiple. Uh, I created AMD sixty four version platform AMD sixty four AMD uh, ARM sixty four ARM sixty four okay. And now I can push Tiboras payload EMD64. I can push ARM64. And I can do build X image tools create. Uh, I think it's uh, Tiboras dash payload. And then you do the various ones. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, this is probably tag. There you go. I mean, it, it didn't show you because I already did it for, for testing it. But if you do image tools, inspect Tibor Vass payload, you will see that um, it has these things. So ju just for the sake of uh, trying a different, uh, a different architecture, uh, uh, what is it? Arm, arm v6, I think. Ah, arm v6, push arm v6. So, yeah, this is this is not super great because, uh, this image doesn't have any information of of what kind of uh, it, it, do, it doesn't have OS or Linux or um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, it doesn't have that information. But here, if you you add this on V six. Actually, you don't even need to do this. You could just do an append of just that one additional uh, uh, additional thing, and now you have it. It's it's all it's multi it's multi arch for all. So this means that if you go on an ARM box, uh, ARM sixty four box or an x eighty six box, you just run TBRS payload and it will it will uh, it will run. Or I mean, in this case, it won't because payload is, is nothing. There's no entry point set, but you get the idea. Nice. I think, yeah, I think this would be the easier way to to do that in Gorillaz right now because the users won't have to change anything. I think maybe their Docker images tags if they are like 
Right. So Very in, that, bad. In, in, in that case, I, I would suggest uh, I would suggest uh, looking at, at this uh, create.go commands image tools create.go, and this is how it sets up all the all the things and and the magic happens in uh, where is combine. This is the magic happening here, and then push. That's it. Awesome. Yeah, we take a look. Yeah, at guys, that. time flies, so I I don't want to keep like <laughs> this discussion uh, going too too far. But yeah, I mean, I I, I hope that uh, every, like everybody got something out from this discussion, and uh, uh, I think there is a lot that kind of can do uh, like quickly to get support maybe for or that i can do quickly <laughs> as well <laughs> as a contributor uh, but there is also like looking at what tibor show us there is also a lot to think about for eventually like a um a v2 or a front of or a front end for build kit that looks like a laser because that that's also appealing to me <laughs> now that mm -hmm. i saw the, the demo can I say just one thing? If people are interested in, in BuildKit or BuildX, just join the Docker community Slack and the BuildKit channel. We hang out there, you can ask questions, and we'll be happy to answer them. Yeah, I'm there, and there are a lot of cool stuff happening. But I'm also in the uh, Gopher Gorlizer channel. That, that's also okay. uh, a place uh, where you can go. Me too. <laughs> yeah, me too, if you have any, any questions. Uh, also on GoRelaser, there is a discussion tab on the repository if you need more help, like on the specifics of GoRelaser or how to use it or anything. Yeah. So I really like the idea of you know being able to uh, to build Docker images with GoRelaser and being able to to uh, run GoRelaser inside Docker image, inside yeah. Docker containers. Yeah. It's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever we go, there is a lot of fun too in the in the steps. So that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm gonna close the uh, the streaming now and the recording. And uh, yeah, see you soon.